Today I'm going to talk about my visits to two Tibetan ashrams in the etheric realms, in the realms that are higher than earth. And I want to first start with my visit to a Tibetan etheric ashram in the Himalayas. This visit that I did um, was many years ago. And this ashram is in the Himalayas, in the etheric or heavenly astral realms. And when I was uh, invited to go there many years ago, I was taken to their, um, this room that was wooden in the inside with a hardwood floor and wooden walls. And one of the walls um, had sliding doors, wooden doors that pulled completely open. And um, you could see out, there was just clear space and you could see out to this magnificent view of Himalayan mountains. It was one of the most beautiful things I had seen uh, in, that, in my lifetime at that time. And this room was a meditation room for cellas, for, for beginners, or I don't know if the word would be beginners because you have to be invited there, but let's just say compared to the great immortal beings that were our guides and monks, we were pretty much low on the totem pole. And so in this room, we were all dressed in these what looked like burlap gowns. They were, they didn't fit, they were baggy, they were, you know, you would think they were like itchy, but they didn't itch, but they were just unsightly uh, burlap brown bags that we wore as robes. And this was symbolic of our status. And in this room, we walked in and we lined up and we sat in rows facing the outside of view. And so there were these long rows of uh, beings, of people, of humans. And I was, um, the times that I would go, I was usually sitting somewhere on the second row towards uh, one to uh, second row end aisle, end of the aisle. And we were to sit there and we were to meditate. And we were being taught how to meditate. And so the lessons I was learning in these lessons of meditation was how to sit and um, close your eyes and meditate without distraction. So when I first started in these meditation um, series with these Tibetans, I would sit uh, in my burlap type gown uh, on the floor and I would close my eyes and after a short time, I would open them up again and just stare at the beautiful scenery outside. I was so captivated by the nature that I was seeing that it was very hard for me to sit with my eyes closed for a long period of time. In fact, in the beginning days of this experience, I would sometimes just get up out of the meditation group and go and stand at the edge of this um, a wall that had been opened and just peer down and peer and look all around at the magnificent place that we were. I mean, there was a sheer drop below us. There were beautiful snow-capped snow -capped mountains that sparkled. It had an etheric sparkle to it and the colors were amazing. And I would just, you know, stand there with my jaw dropped. And many of the monks paid no attention to this, but the one immortal monk that had been sort of my tutor, he would roll his eyes at me and point to go back and sit down. And apparently I wasn't a very good student in the beginning because I just couldn't keep my fascination with the nature I was seeing, you know, I couldn't keep from being attached to it. And so it took a while that I would have, the lesson I was learning through this experience with these Tibetans was to sit in meditation and no matter what was going on outside, uh, 
maybe some horrible noise or something in the world that was very upsetting or some magnificent beauty that you just couldn't believe existed, either of these extremes, the lesson I was to learn was to close my eyes and to stay inward. And so over a period of time, I began to close my eyes and release the beauty of the place that I was in and learn to focus my thought inward um, into the darkness because when you close your eyes, even in the etheric realms, when I was closing my eyes, you would first see just darkness. And over a period of time, as your consciousness began to expand, this is how you began to travel and go up into higher densities of light because your inward motion was so powerful, you could then move inward. So that was my experience with the Tibetan ashram in the Himalayas. Now the second experience I, um, I will want to tell you about was many years past that uh, training that I went through, I was um, invited to what I call the Rainbow Body Valley. Um, it's a Rainbow Body Valley of guardians and when I first appeared there this was a valley um, if you could imagine a valley having plat um, a long valley that um, you know a, just a long canyon or a, a valley and at the top of the at the top of the hills it was flat like a plateau and then it went down into this valley and along this uh, ledge or this side of these hills were uh, trellises or stair steps uh, that were embedded or carved into the side of these hills. They were all grassy green. And in these little steps that went down, um, I stood there, my first experience, I stood there, there was nothing there. I was just admiring the beauty of the valley and the sloping hills with the, with the sort of step um, levels and I was standing up on, the, uh, on more of the plateau part. And then there was this, then there began to be these like explosions of light popping all around me. And as I began to watch these little lights popping they manifested into bodies that were sitting down on these stairs, these ledges. And they were all uh, sitting like next to each other where there was some space between each one of them, but they would be in a line. So when you looked at the valley from one end, you could see uh, rows and rows and rows of these beings and they they popped in from higher dimensions, sixth and seventh dimensions. And where I was seeing them manifest was uh, at this fifth density, uh, fifth density, sixth density area, but very fifth in that it had a look very similar to an earth type setting in that it was nature that we would be familiar with. It was hills. It was green uh, slopes. And so it was still in this very um, world of form that was very pleasing. But as I began to watch all these beings popping in, there was like um, a, a blast of rainbow colors and then they would just be manifested sitting in like a lotus position. And after all of this occurred, it's, it took you know some time for all of them to show up. They were coming in from other places. And when they came in, um, I was uh, pointed, they pointed to me, one of them that was near me, I was still on the plateau, but he was just down the step from me, pointed to a place for me to sit. And I went and sat down there with them. And there began to be this amazing uh, chorus of, of, of beings in a unified uh, action, they began to chant and meditate. 
And that's the basic words I can give to you, but there was a massive amount of energy that was taking place. Um, all of their minds began to harmonize or their consciousness began to harmonize. They would sort of, ch they would do these chants and the vibration was getting very intense and very powerful. And at some point this, this vibration just really crescendoed into this perfect harmony and they were then sitting in this vibrational frequency that actually had sounds to it and colors going on and I was not a part of the meditation process I was just uh, allowed to be a witness to it because I was not at that time able to sync my meditation practice with what they were doing these were Tibetans who had, uh, and other beings, but these were Tibetans who had um, achieved the ascended rainbow body of light. But also in this valley were other extraterrestrial beings that are part of this Tibetan lineage. In other words, the Tibetan teachings are not earth teachings. They've been um, tweaked and adapted to earth but they came from the other from other star systems and so in this valley are other star beings who also have rainbow bodies of light however they have them however millions of years they've had them or just recently they were all these beings as was my understanding and and uh way to understand what they were telling me was the rainbow body, which is what we understand in uh, earth terms that the Tibetans have done when they have ascended and there's a big rainbow in the sky. And so they were uh, equ um, equating that to me so that I could make a connection as to what frequency these Tibetans, because there were Tibetans there. Um, and so the whole valley then were these rainbow beings and they uh, I began to tap into um, their consciousness and they, were be, they would tell me that they are guardians of our, our entire sector and they are manifesting at this level where I was to, to tell me that they also are guardians of our reality and guardians of our planet, our realities, um, our solar system, the area that we're focused in here, but also guardians of our blueprint. And when I say blueprint, we all have that individual divine blueprint, but they are guardians of the blueprint of the program, um, some of the program that is running throughout our realities and other realities that are similar to us. Um, and they are guarding that. And what they also do is they infuse their consciousness into these uh, divine cosmic blueprints and they sort of hold that frequency in their consciousness. And um, this is one of the things they do. And when they ascend off of Earth in the fashion that they do with the rainbow body, they have chosen to be one of these guardians in a similar way where I have been working as a pattern keeper with my Syrian friends. It's sort of a path I've been working. Many of these Tibetans have been working this rainbow path because the rainbow path is a path of guardianship. It guards and protects the divine program, which is, um, greater is a greater blueprint than our individual divine blueprint it is the divine program and i've mentioned to you in several videos well, that we are in like a program and i i compare it to a computer game it's the simplest way to do it in our language but it is a divine program that has levels and densities of consciousness uh, levels and densities of reality and our consciousness because we have a blueprint that is multi-dimensional and our consciousness is attached to the blueprint our consciousness is not attached to any body it's attached to the blueprint 
we can manifest bodies in any density, any reality, any frequency, because our blueprint can create a body for us. And our consciousness, as long as our consciousness is expanded enough, it can hold that body in that frequency. And greater, and then these blueprints are inside of our soul. Remember, the soul is a container for consciousness. But greater than this are these beings that are the guardians of the divine program. So now we're talking the larger scale reality that many of our uh, avatars and our souls and uh, extraterrestrials and all conscious life are now experiencing. They're, they're the guardians of that. And Tibetans are some of the representatives from Earth because in this valley were various kinds of extraterrestrials, various beings from different densities, different planets, different solar systems. So the Tibetans have joined in on that, some of them, and they are part of this guardianship. So those are the two experiences I wanted to tell you about the Tibetans. And in my Patreon group, I have this month in July, put in the Patreon group a set of mantras, Tibetan mantras, which are very powerful for our Patreon group to start using. So um, if you are a member, they're here and they are in July's, uh, they are in July's uh, pro, um, program now. So you can go and get these Tibetan mantras. If you're not a member of my Patreon group, um, you can please, I'll put a link below and you can come and join the Patreon group. But one of the things I wanted to mention is there is a group of mantras that I've been using. They're in a CD form. They're from Tibetan monks and they're in the Patreon uh, group today. And they are very powerful chants. I've been using them for um, a number of years now. And they bring high vibration into your house. They clear out negative energy. They hold a high vibration for prosperity, abundance, healing, spiritual awakening, uh, knowledge and wisdom, expanding consciousness. And so I wanted to bring these two experiences that I've had with the Tibetans in to, uh, at this July uh, video in order to help um, the uh, patrons in my group uh, understand more about the mantras that I have given them. And so that was my uh, discussion for today. And um, if you want to be sure, come be sure and join the Patreon group or subscribe. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you.